Yeah, I don't want YouTube to copyright me. Let's just get into this tutorial. I'm actually going to be wearing these Sweet and Shimmer Creaseless Hair Clips. My sister had bought it for me. She stuffed it in my little stocking stuffer. And there's four of these. I'm going to use them because I generally use my black clips, but I blue dry my hair on Thanksgiving and they have been missing since. So I'm probably going to have to add that to my birthday list. Wow. Happy New Year, everyone. How has everyone's holiday been? How has everyone's New Year's been? So another thing my sister bought me. My sister got me the Kosar X. I don't have the cleanser with me, but it was the eye cream, the cream moisturizer, and then of course the famous essence. So I'm going to be using this for my skincare. I actually ran out of this little guy and I swear by it because it makes the difference. You already know Indie Lee is my absolute favorite freaking spray. I like swear by it all the time. It's my favorite toner. I don't know how people do that all aesthetically. It just sprays a lot. It's basically just olive oil and hyaluronic acid. So yeah, my skin needs dehydration my skin has been doing okay i've been giving it a little bit of a break if you guys don't know i do have cystic acne hence why i have all of it but it's okay normalize acne going in with the snail mucin 96 power essence this is by kosar x if you haven't been put on let this be your sign to be put on i know there's been some like mixed reviews i personally really like it i have nothing but great things to say so I don't know, it just makes my skin feel bouncy and just plumpy and revived. Let me know if you would like an in-depth skincare routine because I am more than happy to do it. <laughs> my chair is like super high, so I'm struggling just a tad bit, but it's okay. Next, this is also by Kosar X, the Snail Mucin Peptide for your eye. I actually have never tried their eye cream other than until I got this kit, so I think it's pretty great. I actually really do love the Kiehl's and the Dermalogica, so if this one does really well, I think I'm gonna have to buy it too. I do use the Banish eye cream as well. I've used it for maybe two two years now but I really like the consistency the thing was with my eye creams I constantly run out if you haven't already this would be a great time to go ahead and check out my podcast channel yes I have a podcast channel it is at a mad life podcast if you guys are interested in knowing what it is living in your 20s if you're not living it already via through me it would be a great chance to check it out my grandma sent me a voicemail what'd she say let's hear it hello <laughs> Ito, nandito ako sa kamera. Ito na, nakita ko. Well, <laughs> call you back, Rams. <laughs> anyway, eyes look so swollen. Now going in with the all-in-one cream. This actually comes in a tub, and I've been wanting to buy it, but not for 30 some dollars. But I just might. I might end up buying the full size, I won't lie. Samiko's older sister has actually the tub of it, and she was the one that told me about it, and I was like, bet. I am going to be put on. And it really does moisturize the skin only 305 i still put sunscreen oh look at that it just lightly applies look how juicy look how dewy and radiant and shiny moving on to brows if i can even find it aha stylize i swear by this i haven't used another brow pencil i have been wanting to bleach my brows for a minute no no no, no. don't come for me i want to Next, going in with the Brow Benefits Getter. I don't know what it is. It just gives me that clean brow feather finish. Next thing I'm going to be doing, because I have yet to clean my plexiglass, I'm going to be taking this and using the back of it to put, like, my concealer. What I use to conceal my brows is the Prolong Foundation. As you can see, she's seen better days. You can't even see the shade on the back. Yeah, I'm still in search for a new foundation. The Magic Radiance, the serum that I used prior in another video, I really liked. But honestly, if I'm being so honest with you guys, I think the color is just too dark. I I was looking at the longevity of it and you guys know i won't lie to you i did like the finish at first but then throughout the day i started to see that it would wear out now mind you i am aware that this is more of a radiant finish and it's not necessarily meant to be longevity purposes other than what it advertised but for myself as somebody that has a lot of acne prone skin and and then you know taking in consideration for the longevity purpose of it or that tactic i do take in consideration formulation um depending on what products i've used i have messed around with it for a little bit and i'm not gonna lie if i had a rated i'd probably give it a 7.5 out of 10 Maybe you guys think this is really harsh, um, but it's just for myself. This will always be my favorite foundation. So I'm going to add a little bit of this onto the back. And I'm going to be taking my concealer as well. I used to use my concealer only at the top, bottom and the top of my brows. But then it looked very bolded and highlighted. So then I stopped doing that. And then I started to do the brows where it was highlighted only at the bottom. And then I do my foundation at the top. Favorite favorite in the world. This is the NC25 Brow Long Concealer. This is by MAC. I am trying to find a do for it. Seeing as I don't work for the brand, I'm sure as hell not going to be spending that money on a concealer. Plus, I'm 
so lucky to live in a generation where there are so many incredible brands and there are literally so many dupes, which reminds me, I am going to be coming out with my dupe video. I realized that I had postponed it for a very long time, which I truly and honestly apologize, guys. I know you're probably sitting there thinking like, girl, how are you going to ask us all these questions and then not even answer it? How are you going to ask us like two months ago and then not even post the video? Trust me, I know. But before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and go in with my Bobbi Brown. This is the Enrich Vitamin Base Primer. You know I use it all the time. I don't even have to explain it. Applying that onto my skin, a nice generous amount. Can you look at that? Look how juicy. Applying that only to my skin area. Area avoiding underneath the eye because as you guys know I do have to use a 24-hour base underneath my eyes next I'm gonna be going in with the 24-hour base eye base I do this all the time you guys know this. this is the Mac 24-hour eye base primer and I literally apply this underneath my eyes I don't know what it is but it always is the trick in keeping the product there if you guys haven't used it for that purpose I highly suggest that you do this is essentially made to be your eyeshadow primer like the urban decay one but I have never liked eyeshadow primers I probably stopped using it in high school which is when I started using it because I started to realize that it just didn't stick with my skin however underneath my eyes I crease like crazy which honestly guys it's inevitable we have skin we can never get rid of texture we can only improve it so i'm gonna go ahead and just nicely apply a thin layer don't add too much don't add too little it's like cooking you add to taste you add to pigmentation i used to say that all the time when i was in the store it was just something that i swore by this is the nyx color correcting palette this is great because it's a cream based palette so i am most definitely going to be doing my updated flawless base routine because i did not like how the last video came out so now i'm going to go ahead i'm going to grab that orange shade right there i'm going to lightly apply some of that color underneath my eyes now taking that green shade, I'm going to go ahead and use that on my other side of the cheek so that way I can go ahead and cancel that redness. I need to get my hands on the NARS concealer because I've heard it's really great. I personally really want to try this. I've heard it's really great for the conceal correcting, so I think that's pretty cool. For myself, it's a matter of thinking acne is completely normal and even though I wear makeup, I don't feel ugly without makeup gonna go ahead and just quickly brush out any of the creases that I might have on my eye. I don't want to set the creases. Remember that. Do not set your creases, hon. I'm gonna be going in with the Warrior by Juvius. I think that this is so much product, great quality, high pigmentation, and it's just affordable. Plastic nude eye. We're not doing anything crazy. You already know your basics. The base transition depth. I kind of alternate between these two brushes. Um, this is the Morphe M433 brush. This is the MAC 217S brush. I love these two brushes. I preferably really love this one because it's so fluffy and it just gives you a soft airbrush finish, which is generally what we want to look for. And what I like to do is I love just tapping that product all over my eyelid and then I'll kind of run it back and forth. Because like I said, this is a very beautiful potent pigment color. I like to grab my finger and then just start tapping. I've gone ahead and done the other eye. I'm now going to be going in with the dark brown shade. Be careful with the darker shades, seeing as you really want to just pick up on it and not overdo it. Just keep doing that. Okay, once you kind of have this going on, I don't want it to feel so harsh. My goodness, it's... oh. <laughs> I'm going to be filling in the front part of my eye with my NC25 in that lighter shade and then going in with this beautiful shimmery color to really open up my eye. Beautiful. I kind of will just pull it from my tear duct. I pretty much only added the glitter to the outer parts of my eyes. I'm going to be taking my eyelash curler and then going in with these. This is the MAC Extended 24 Hour Perm starting up at the root. I'm literally only applying it to the outer part of my lash. This is my all-time favorite brush. This is the MAC 170S brush. If you haven't been put on, I'm putting you on now. I'm going to start lightly tapping the remainder product from my color correction before I put my foundation. Like I said, we can't get rid of texture. We can only improve it. Going back in now with the foundation, I'm going to go ahead and just apply whatever leftover kind of spaces that I have. Again, still avoiding the eye. Probably add the most foundation to my cheek area more than anything because I know that that's where I need the coverage. Studio Fix Plus is going to be your best friend or any setting mist and not a finishing spray. Generally, I would not say do this with your mascara and I should have covered my eyes, but it's totally fine. I try to avoid adding too much product on like my natural creases, like where my smile line is or underneath my eyes. Pat, pat, pat. Again, down to my neckline. 
Then I'm actually going to go back in with the Beauty Puff and I'm just going to lightly push in the product. I've seen girls use this with the foundation. I refuse to do it. I think it's so aesthetically pleasing and if I had the money to actually waste some makeup like that, I would. Not saying it's a waste, but I do notice that this little guy will absorb a lot of product. Um, hence why I don't really use beauty blenders as well so yeah now moving on i'm actually going to be going back in with my favorite cream blush this is a cream bronzer this is my favorite cream bronzer this is by jaclyn hill cosmetics this is in the shade sandy so potent in color but it's so natural and at an angle pick up some product because i do have a rounder face i have to give the illusion that i have cheekbones I love cream products. Love, love, love. Cream bronzers are especially my favorite because they just look so good on the skin. So I'm actually going to be going in with the Patrick Ta for face. This is the Blush Volume 2 palette and I have been obsessed with this. I actually got this for my birthday and it's taking that beautiful blush powder and brushing up because he says that he uses the powder and then cream over the powder. Beautiful. Like so... Believe it or not, I used to be so scared of this concealer and then my coworkers were like, no, you need to use it because you're super oily. And I was like, you guys are crazy. I'm not using that. I'm going to be taking my Studio Fix powder and my loose Jaclyn Hill powder. I went ahead and popped my lashes on really fast. It's looking a little bit better. I don't know what's going on with my eye, but it's been like watering for some reason. So I'm trying not to cake my eye, but I may have added too much concealer which is fine so just tapping trying to be careful where i put the press powder though because it does sit on the skin pretty much kind of setting where i naturally crease and i started to do this first instead of doing how i used to do it which was with the loose powder and then the press powder so this the other way around has been working even though it's going to show the same results but i don't go in with my like full fat like my full press powder first really want to make sure that my under eye is as not cake but baked. It's gonna look very flashbacky, so we're gonna have to bring the color back. And I'm kind of like looking up and then kind of blending it with the powder back and forth, and then I kind of set it. I think there's some confusion when I say powder, people tend to think it's the translucent. Your loose powder is meant to bake, but you're supposed to mix your powders. So pressed and loose powders have a totally, completely different purpose. So like, for example, if I'm using my pressed powder that's meant for my, like, pressed powdered foundation, this is going to be the same color as the rest of my face versus a loose powder that's only going to bake, but it's also going to brighten. So keeping that in mind. I'm going to be taking NC35, placing that in certain areas of my face to bring down the intensity of that really bright under eye. It just sets everything into place. Place, the blush now mind you I'm still technically baking as I said before Patrick Ta himself uses the cream and then he uses the powder so going in with that pinky color I'm gonna be taking my finger and lightly pressing up against the cheekbone it's gonna give more of like a little dewy glow so kind of doing the finishing touches my lips are really dry I have only been using clear lip gloss and then just working with my natural lip color I used to get compliments all the time when I was working at Mac like what lip color am I wearing and I'm like oh I'm wearing gloss and they're like clear gloss or tinted I said clear they're like no what lipstick do you have and I was like nothing I'm just wearing clear lip gloss they'd always tell me no you get like a tint and I was like no I got money for that come on now this is the Madison Beer Morphe Lip Gloss. Any lip gloss will do, huh? This is such a Madison Beer kind of look too. Today was hair wash day and I really just want to work with the natural hair. So I'm just going to part it like that. Look at that. Pretty simple. I would say this is probably going to be my more realistic everyday makeup routine in the sense that you can absolutely take out the shimmer or you can keep the shimmer. It really doesn't matter. Um, I think it's pretty simple, pretty straightforward. You know what I mean? It's not a whole lot going on. So just like that and you are all done. You don't obviously have to cake the face as much as I do. That's just my preference and that's just how it is. I hope you guys enjoy this video as much as I enjoyed making it. You may have realized that I pretty much wiped and cleaned my YouTube channel. This is solely for the purpose that I wanted a fresh new start. I did keep my shorts, but I took out my videos. I just want to keep it like this. I want this to be like a fresh start, like a new video. Crossing my fingers, we can hit 500 by the end of this month because we have been growing, like I said, 
so much and I'm so so grateful so thank you. If you guys haven't already I highly suggest that you take this opportunity to follow all of my social media platforms at Madeline Rose Young and check out my podcast because I actually also posted today a little special episode just for you guys. I was working extra hard. I did explain in my podcast that I became inactive within the last week of the year just because I wanted to take that time to dedicate brainstorm and start planning for you guys and I will see you guys next time. Happy New Year and let's start this on the best possible way. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. Bye.